Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George. Sure. Oh, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good for the last drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time. Transcribed in Hollywood and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest tonight, Mickey Rooney, yours truly, Toby Reed, Wally Mayer, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee-drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, it's pretty hard to surprise a man who's been married to Gracie Allen for 15 years. He's heard everything. But occasionally, even George gets a jolt. For example, today, when Gracie said, George, would you like to have a son? Sure, Gracie. Oh, good. Then we're adopting Mickey Rooney. <laughs> adopting Mickey Rooney? Yes, dear. I've been reading about him in this movie magazine. You know, that poor little child needs a home. Someone to guide him. Look, here's a picture of him driving a car. Mm, what's wrong with that? Well, that's no plaything for a child. <laughs> Why, that, that dear little boy should be cuddling a doll. Look again, he probably is. <laughs> Gracie, Mickey Rooney may look like a little boy, but I've got news for you. He's old enough to get married. Oh, married. Oh, George, you're funny. Well, I'll bet he doesn't know what life is all about. He knows as much as I do. Well, there, you see? <laughs> We're not adopting Mickey Rooney. If we adopt anyone, he'll be a minor. Oh, no. I'm not going to have a minor tracking coal dust across my... <laughs> I mean, Mickey is too old to adopt. He's a grown man. George, he's a child. If he wasn't a child, he wouldn't be going to horse races. Is that for children? Oh, certainly. I read that the Kentucky Derby is just for three-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have it your way. Mickey Rooney is a child. We're still not adopting him. But, dear, he needs a father and a mother. And that happens to work out just right for us. You're a man and I'm a woman. No other couple can make that statement. <laughs> You know, Mickey's becoming a juvenile delinquent. A boy who robs the very studios he works for. Where'd you get that? It's right here in this article. It says he steals every picture he's in. <laughs> this is murder. Well, just think of that poor little boy associating with thieves and crooks. Maybe we can keep him from falling in with worse company. Gracie, he associates with actors. We're too late, huh? <laughs> Yes, and forget it. But there's always a chance that a good home can save him. And by adopting Mickey, we'll keep two children out of mischief. Two children? Well, yes, I'll be too busy to get into trouble. <laughs> I forgot your child. Well, I'm yes. not really, yes. but everyone thinks I am. They think I play with marbles. You? Well, yeah, often I've heard people say, I don't think she's got all her marbles. <laughs> Yes, that, I've heard that myself. That's getting around. Well, I'll run over to Mickey's house and get it. Hold it, hold it. Once and for all, you cannot adopt him. Besides, he won't let you. he laughs laugh right in your face. Well, if he does, I'll push him off the chair he's standing on. <laughs> Gracie, I know you mean well, so I hate to get tough with you, but you forced me to. Now, I forbid you even to talk to Mickey Rooney. I command you to stay in this house. That is an order. Oh, Judge, I didn't realize you were so strong and masterful. I am when I have to be. Oh, you're going to make a wonderful father for Mickey. <laughs> now, excuse me while I change my clothes. Oh, by golly, this time I'll head her off. I'll go over and warn Mickey. Uh, what, what you want, please? I want to see Mickey Rooney. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Rooney, not come home. Mr. Rooney leave town, not come back. Goodbye, please. Stop, stop. <laughs> oh, 
tell him George Burns was there. Oh, oh, George, wait a minute. Hi, George, come in. Hello, Mickey. What's, uh, what's the idea of the big routine? I'm hiding out from my studio, George. They want me to play another one of those innocent little kid parts. I'm fed up to the teeth with it. But, Mickey, you were great as Andy Hardy with Lewis Stone as your father. George, if he tells me about the birds and bees once more, I'll sting him. <laughs> well, you want to do the grown-up stuff, huh? Why, sure. Now, there's another part in the same picture that I'd love to do. A tough guy, a killer. This beautiful girl is crazy about me. She's with me when the cops close in. The place is full of tear gas. We're kissing and crying. <laughs> All right. Come out with your hands up, killer. We got you surrounded. Come and get me, Topper. Ah! <laughs> oh, killer. Killer, you hit. It's, it's nothing, kid. Just a few ribs shot away. <laughs> ah! Take that, Topper. Ah! Killer, killer, you hit again. Ah! Nelly, this is it. It's goodbye. No, killer. I'm going to have to watch that girl, George. She's pretty hammy. <laughs> well, good luck, Mickey. I hope you get the part you want. Thanks, George. If I can hide from the studio long enough, I think they'll give in. Well, I just uh, I just dropped by to warn you that Gracie has made up her mind to adopt you. Adopt me? Yeah. She thinks you're a little boy. Yeah, you see, everybody thinks I'm a kid. I'm the only dancer at the Palladium who gets cut in on by the truant officer. It's tough, Mickey. I'll say it is. I buy a girl a present. I take her out in my car. I park. I puck her up, and what happens? She sticks a lollipop in my mouth. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd warn you about Gracie. I told her not to bother you, but she, she pays no attention to me. Really? I thought husbands always gave the orders and wives always obeyed without question. <laughs> Kid, you not only look young, you are young. <laughs> So long, Mickey. So long. <laughs> uh, one of all, I'm not alone in our air. Go away, please. Stop, stop. Open the door, Mickey. You can't fool me with that English accent. <laughs> That's got to be Gracie. Just a minute. Uh, excuse the act, Gracie. I'm hiding from my studio. Stealing again. Huh? Oh, Mickey boy, give up this life you're leading and come live with George and me. <laughs> I'd rather not. Well, everybody will think you're George's real son. You look just like him. Now I've got two reasons to hide. <laughs> look, you need someone to look after you. Why aren't you in school? <laughs> I, I graduated. Oh, that's a pretty lame excuse. <laughs> and besides, I don't believe it. Well, Gracie, come inside and I'll show you my sheepskin. You leave your clothes on, young man. <laughs> I'm not your mother yet. Oh, but I want to be, Mickey. I'll see that you get an education. I'll even hire a private tutor to tutor you. <laughs> no, look here, Gracie, really. I, I've been tutored. I've had an education. Well, we'll see whether you have or not. So, cat. Cap? Ha-ha. <laughs> Too tough for you, huh? <laughs> well, I'll give you a simpler word. Spell two. T-O. T-W-O or T-O-O? Oh, no. You don't get three guesses. No, <laughs> 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 you're, you're really in a bad shape. Look, Gracie, I went to school. Just ask me questions about literature, economics, chemistry, physics. Anything. Go ahead. All right. Let's say chemistry. All right. Who is the president of the United States? <laughs> That, uh, that, Gracie, is unrelated subject matter. No, sir. That's Harry S. Truman. <laughs> I mean, chemistry has nothing to do with the president. Chemistry is when you put a whole lot of strange things together and get gas or something. Now, that's Congress. <laughs> All right, you win, you win. Let's, let's take another subject. I, I majored in math and languages, geometry and Latin. You did, huh? Yeah, sure. Let's say you say something in geometry. <laughs> say something in geometry? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me see. Pi R squared. Pi R squared. <laughs> that proves you never went to school. Pi R 
ายาอย่างHearing again and again, and so it is with our enjoyment of truly good coffee. There's nothing we enjoy more day after day. Now that's why this fact is so impressive. Here in America, where coffee is our national drink, more of us buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Why this great preference for Maxwell House? Well, there's just one reason: flavor. That good to the last drop flavor. Only Maxwell House gives you, and the secret of this famous Maxwell House flavor is blending, expert blending which combines the separate flavor characteristics of many premium Latin American coffees. First, our Maxwell House experts select Manizales for mellowness. Next, Medellins are added for richness. Then other fine coffees for robust vigor. And to round out the blend, Bucaramangas contribute their fine, full body. This superb Maxwell House blend is then radiant roasted to flavor perfection and brought to you vacuum packed in the familiar blue tin. Vacuum packing is important, ladies, for roasted coffee ground or in the whole bean loses flavor when packed in ordinary containers. But Maxwell House is carefully vacuum packed so it comes to you fresh and fragrant as the hour it was roasted. Friends, why be satisfied with anything but the best in coffee drinking pleasure? Tomorrow, enjoy Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, here I am, Mama. Well, you certainly got here in a hurry, Michael. Michael? What's with the Michael? Well, that's your name now, Michael Burns. <laughs> But Mama, I... now come along and I'll show you your room. This is where you'll sleep. Mm, well, it's nice. But uh, George is in that bed. I can see his head sticking out of the covers. That's a teddy bear. <laughs> oh, oh. How could you mistake a teddy bear for George? <laughs> Silly. <laughs> a teddy bear has little fuzzy arms and legs and tiny shoe button eyes and. Well, anyhow, it's not yours. But uh, Gracie, what's uh, what's a teddy bear doing in my bed? Well, I bought it for you. It'll be your companion, your playmate. Oh, 
Well, I'll bet you never had one before with such a lovely fur coat. I've had a few playmates with the fur coats. <laughs> Did you break them? No, they broke me. <laughs> what? Uh, well, let it go, Mama. Just let it go. <laughs> now, over here is your clothes closet. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the yeah. way, I've ordered a new brown suit for you. New brown suit? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Light brown or dark brown? Buster brown. Now, <laughs> uh, wait just a minute, will you please? I, I, I can't wear that. Oh, Michael, if you want to stay here, you'll do as I say. You know, Mama knows that. Okay, Mama. I'll wear it on special occasions, like when there's an eclipse of the sun. Well, that's a good boy. Nicky, I was over... Nicky. Mm. Hello, Daddy. <laughs> huh? I'm Sonny Boy. Do you mean to say that you let Gracie adopt you? Sure, George, sure. My studio will never find me here. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, Mickey, I don't mind. Oh, I'm glad, darling. If we hide him, you'll have a chance to grow into a fine, decent man, just like his daddy. Sure. He can step right into my shoes. Oh, that's the perfect place for him to hide. (laughs) Yeah, there's plenty of room there. (laughs) You know, we must raise him properly, George. Send him to the finest schools and make sure he's not a Republican. (laughs) And not a Republican? I want our boy to be president. I've bought some books to improve his little mind. Now, uh, Michael, hmm? sit down and I'll read you a poem. Michael? Uh, that's my name now. Oh, Michael. Yeah. Yes, Michael Rooney. Nice mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Now, I shall uh, read Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Uh. On the shores of Gippy Goomy, by the shining big sea water, stood the uh, Mom, uh, please, Mom, if you don't mind, I've got something here in my pocket that I've read. Well, let me have it. I'll read it no, to give, you. give it to me, will you? Yeah, I said I'll read no, it, Michael. Mom, give it back. Now, pay attention. In the fifth at Hialeah. <laughs> there are only seven entries. Weather poor and track is muddy. Why, it's just like Hiawatha, only prettier. Look, look. Uh, Mama, Mama, look. Uh, Mama, don't. You know what you're reading. No, I didn't look at the title. It's the racing form. Well, it's the loveliest thing Longfellow ever wrote. Yeah, she was a fine writer. Well, that's enough culture for now. It's time for your nap, Michael. My nap? In the middle of the day? Well, yes, little boys need plenty of rest, don't they, Daddy? Uh, Daddy, that's you. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. (laughs) It's, uh, it's time the little man went very by, huh? Mama, I'll take a nap if Daddy here takes one, too. Oh, how sweet. Hop in bed with him, George. <laughs> Are you kidding? Now, dear, don't argue. You've got to set our son a good example. Come to Betty by, Daddy. And, Michael, don't let the railroad train frighten you. Does one run by the house? No, no, but when George sleeps on his back, you'll think so. <laughs> When he blows the whistle, turn him over. I'm not taking a nap. You get in that bed or Mama will punish you. I'd like to see you. Oh, not me. I'll send for my Mama. Move over, Michael. Come on. (laughs) That's better. Now kiss Mama before you go to sleep, Michael. Hmm? Kiss Mama. Uh, uh. than I thought. <laughs> well, now kiss Daddy. Are you... Oh, that's it. Wait a minute. That's all. Brother. Now, I want this to be a devoted family. Kiss your dad. I'd rather play a love scene with laughing. <laughs> Well, two days have now passed since Gracie brought little Mickey to live with little George. And all is not peaceful in the Burns house. Gracie, do you know that Mickey smoked every one of my cigars? Oh, bless his little heart. He kept his word. Huh? He promised me that he'd give up cigarettes. (laughs) 
Nice kid. Oh, isn't he, though? And he really thinks of you as his father. Every time he makes a long-distance call, he says, Charge it to my father, George Burns. <laughs> Gracie, that boy, one of these... Hiya, Pop! Hello, Mama! Oh, hello, Michael. By the way, Pop, here's the keys to your hot rod. I've got a brand new car. It's not a hot rod. It is now. I took the fenders off. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Michael, you mustn't take the fenders off Daddy's car. You'll get your hands all dirty. <laughs> That is, Gracie. I'm taking Michael in the den for a little talk. Huh? Come along. Oh, wait a minute, George. Come, along. <laughs> Come in. Well, hi, Gracie. Hello, Bill. We haven't seen you all week. Where have you been? Oh, out of town. I ran up to San Francisco. Oh, you must be out of breath. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What's new, Gracie? Oh, there's wonderful news. George and I have a son. No kidding. When did he arrive? Just a few days ago. His name is Michael Burns. Well, gee, tell me all about it. How much does he weigh? About 120 pounds. <laughs> this kid I gotta see. He's, he's in the den with George. I'll open the door and you can peek in. Holy murder, I knew it. George is so old, he had an old baby. <laughs> Gracie adopted? Yeah, 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 that's right, Billy. Well, George, so Gracie finally did what thousands of people have wanted to do. What's that? She slipped you a Mickey. <laughs> Bill, he's hiding from uh, from his studio. Yeah. And like a suck, I let him stay here. Oh. Now I've had enough. Come on, Bill. Help me throw him out. Oh, wait, sure. a, wait a minute. Wait a George. minute. Are you nuts? If, if Mickey wants to be your son, hang on to him. But he makes a bundle. He can support you. Yeah, you, you, you tell him that. Right. Yeah. I don't need Mickey to support me. Well, I know, but it's time Gracie had a rest. I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey is leaving. Out, kid, out. George, I don't understand you. You've always wanted a son to carry on. Not one who carries on like this little twerp. <laughs> what do you mean, twerp? Throw him out, Bill. Now, listen, don't call Mickey a little twerp. That's right, tell He's him. very talented. He could be a big help on your radio program. Sure, I can be the one who tells the people about Maxwell House coffee. I'll tell them that Maxwell House is rich, delicious, and mellow. Now, wait a minute, kid. I'll tell them that Maxwell House <laughs> is America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Now, hold it, Mickey. I'll explain how Maxwell House is a blend of choice Latin American coffee. Hold radiant, it, roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection. Hold it, And vacuum-packed so that it comes to you roast afresh. Hold it, I'll tell right. them just exactly... Hold it, you little twerp! <laughs> You're trying to steal my job, you little no-talent chiseler. I'm throwing you out of here right now. Wait a boy, no Bill. Wait a... Oh, let me go. Oh, oh Michael, did you... Oh, how sweet. Uncle Bill is teaching you how to dance. <laughs> no. No, Mom. Uncle Bill's trying to kill me. Help. Oh, Bill, stop choking that child. Okay. Uh, are you all right, Michael? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think so. I... I think I swallowed my Adam's apple. Uh, well, never mind. When Adam comes around, I'll buy you another. <laughs> Bill Goodwin, you're a brute choking a little boy. Next you go, you'll be wrestling with girls. Hey, that reminds me. I got a date. So long. Well, come on, Michael, darling. You can go out in the backyard. I'll put an end to this. I'll phone Mickey Studio and tell the director to come and get him. I'll answer it, Mama. Wally, how did you know I was Never here? mind that now. Huh? I've got good news for you. Wait a minute. I... Now, wait a minute. We've decided to give you the part you wanted. You know, the tough guy. <laughs> come on, come on, let's get going. Gee, it... <laughs> but wait a minute. It won't be so easy to break the news to Mama. Mama? Yeah, Mrs. Burns, she thinks she adopted me. <laughs> What a time I've had here. Well, they must have treated you right. You look great. Oh, Wally, I feel great. Never eaten such good food in my life. Really? Yeah, what a cook her husband is. <laughs> well, now, look, Mickey, I got an idea. Living here has put you in great shape. 
So why don't you stay here while you learn your new part? Uh huh. I'll come over every day and work on it with you. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad, Wally. Gee, it's uh, too bad I can't live here too. Wait a minute. Hmm? Maybe you can. If Mrs. Burns adopted me, why why shouldn't she adopt you? Oh, Mickey, only a woman who's daffy would do that. You're as good as adopted. <laughs> come along and come along and follow my lead. Mama, oh, Mama, I'd like you to meet Wally. <laughs> Wally's my best friend. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Hello, Wally. Oh, aren't you a little old to be a playmate of Michael's? Uh, oh, uh, Mama, we're the same age. But Wally just looks old because he's had such a terrible life. He was raised in poverty. Is that far from Los Angeles? <laughs> about, uh, about 20 miles. When he was a tiny baby, he was left on a doorstep, Mama. Oh, he's a stepchild. <laughs> Say, uh, Mama, why don't you adopt him, too, huh? Well, uh, would you be happy here, Wally? Oh, yes. Oh, well, then I'll do it. My, it's a wonderful age we live in. It took my mother almost a year to have a child. And in less than a week, I have two of them. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's your father, boys. Wait here. Hello, George. Oh, something happened while you were gone. Yeah, I figured that it would. Well, come in the other room with me. Okay. Okay. Who's this? Hello, Daddy. <laughs> huh? I adopted another son, George. Oh, how cute. Daddy's got to play games with you boys. He's getting a baseball bat out of the closet. Wait a minute. Get him out, boys. George and Gracie will return in just a moment. Ladies, would you like to help cut down the terrible toll of home accidents? If so, join the housewives from coast to coast to reforming Don't Be a Gracie Club. These club members pledge themselves to rid their homes of the hazards that cause accidents. So if you'd like to form a Don't Be a Gracie Club in your community, write to Gracie Allen, Hollywood Plaza Hotel, Hollywood 28, California. Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Harry Lubin, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Sorry, we're a little late. Good night, folks. If you like good things the easy way, good things the easy way, instant Maxwell House, that's for you. Good, good coffee that's easy, too. No time, no trouble, no ground, so pop, and it's good to the very last, you know what? Mickey Rooney appeared by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, producers of the Technicolor musical The Barclays of Broadway, starring a set of stairs in Jalandria and Oscar Levant. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul Henning and Pete Fowler. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.